Hi guys, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another reading vlog in front of my bookshelves. How exciting. So this reading vlog is going to be really about continuing the settling in process and also starting two books I am so, so, so excited about. I feel like I have been disappointed <laughs> recently in picking up some books I really thought I was going to love. So I have super high expectations for these next two books because I'm really hopeful that I will love them. And I've heard so many fantastic things, particularly from you guys, about them. So anyway, let's chat about the books. Before I dive into the books themselves, I do want to say this video is sponsored by Wondrium, which I'll be chatting more about later on in this video. So here are the two books I'm going to be chatting about in this vlog. The primary book is going to be Daughter of the Fortis by Julia Morillier. I've already started this and I've read about 65 pages and immediately I have been pulled in from the setting to the writing style. It feels classic, feels sweeping, and this sort of medieval-esque forest vibe. I love it all. Um, I also want to start The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan as well this week, particularly the audiobook, which I've already downloaded, which I'm so excited about. Not to mention, I'm also trying to get back into my cozy video game playing now that my kind of house is put back together a bit. I fell off of it and I want to get back on it because I just love it so much and I want to listen to the audiobook of this and play more Zelda. So that is the plan for this vlog. It's Tuesday afternoon. I need to make lunch and get back to work. But this evening I plan to read more Daughter of the Forest and give you more of like an update about my thoughts and feelings. I bought this cute avocado candle on sale and I can't wait for it to burn through and I'm gonna use it as a little container. It even comes with this little topper. I love it so much, but now I'm going to read some Daughter of the Forest. I've gotten a good amount of the way through with my work today. So I'm taking a reading break. As I said, I think I'm on page Yes, 66, and I don't know. So far, so great. It just feels very classic, and I love that feeling. So I'm gonna read more right now. Matilda has missed her access to the windows <laughs> for the past three weeks because of the painters. So if anyone was curious what she does pretty much every single day, it's this. Is the tongue out? Of course it is, just a little bit. <laughs> it's time for some fruit. <laughs> Hello, it's me. I've read 100 pages of this book and I am loving every second of it. It's interesting, I went into this story expecting like a lyrical, beautifully written story, which one that is definitely delivering. Um, a lot of you guys had mentioned, because I had mentioned wanting like romance, though when I mention wanting romance in any fantasy book, it definitely doesn't need to be the main plot line. Like if 10% of the book has a little bit of a romantic moment, like I can be very appeased by that. And I consider that like enough, but that's an aside. Um, but a lot of you guys actually mentioned that this book is actually much darker and has quite the journey in it, um, which I can definitely tell from now having read 100 pages of it. And a couple mentioned, a couple people also mentioned that they wish they had trigger warnings going in. So far outside of like parental abuse, but I have quite a lot of this book left. So I'll be sure to call out any trigger warnings as I come across them. But a hundred pages into this book, I am vibing with this book so much from the writing to the characters, to the overall style of the story. I've just fallen head first into it. And oh my gosh, it feels so flipping good like right now it's delivering everything i could have wanted and more but a bit more about this book so this story follows sorha um which i definitely googled how to pronounce that and i might still be doing it wrong um, but she lives in the seven waters and the seven waters is like a clan um they have had this sort of castle this keep and there's a bunch of families that live around them but they like offer protection and they've lived there for many generations the seven waters has been always protected by the forest that surrounds the keep this forest is full of things it's very much hinted at being like alive it has like magical creatures maybe some fae maybe some unusual stuff that's happening um, but there's no clear answer about everything like they just respect the forest and they the forest in return provides protection sorha is the youngest of seven children and with her birth their mother actually passed away they would look out for each other and she kind of also called out that each child sort of has their own destiny um, and sorha herself has kind of grown up 
very wild, free, she's educated. She has also thrown herself headfirst into healing and herbalism. Um, so she's very well versed in all of that. Uh, their father, after their mother's passing, very much retreated into himself and he was kind of a cold father. And he also kind of found a new devotion um, in leading this campaign against a perceived enemy Obviously, there are people, marauders, that, like, come to their shores and things, but there's also this, like, greater war against this group of people called the Britons, the Britons. I think they're supposed to be kind of, like, British, and the people living here are supposed to be, like, Irish, but, again, fantasy version of that. All of the sons, for the most part, are trained to also partake in this war, but at the beginning of the story, Sorha is kind of presented with the reality that there like war is not one-sided like there's loss and there is also horror that exists on both sides so this kind of breaks her perception about how life should be led being a little forward an initial conflict occurs her father actually remarries and the new wife is very suspicious and she also seemingly is able to harness magic and she has successfully bewitched not only her father into marriage but also some of her brothers also begun to kind of torment all of the siblings and i think her goal ultimately is like break them apart and break them i've only read 100 pages and that's kind of what i've read so far i'm really into this story from the setting i love our main character sorha i love how this book is being told to us it's so much about stories and storytelling is very central to this as sorha has a lot of stories that her mother would tell um as well and those have been kind of passed down but this book itself feels like a classic fantasy quest story that's told like around the fire but it's also much darker and more gruesome this book has a lot of elements that i also enjoy in robin hobb stories these stories themselves are very different but it's very character focused and it's also not straying away from a lot of the emotional impact that being a hero or a warrior or all of these gruesome things characters and heroes have to confront like what type of emotional impact that would actually leave on someone that is very much part of this, particularly in the early chapters as Sora is actually working to heal an individual. Um, but yeah, I read a fourth of this book pretty much all of today. I'm going to read more. I'm just really into it. I love the writing. I love the setting. And yeah, I just, I just feel like it's going to deliver on all fronts. And I do feel like this book is going to have romance. And again, when I get excited about a book having romance, it doesn't need to be like fully romance. Like, I love when a book is balanced in all ways and that can be like great characters, great action, great like intense plot moments and some romance, you know, like we get it on all fronts and that's what I like to see. But anyway, first 100 pages, super, super positive. I'm going to read more tonight, um, but I'm going to make dinner here now. So goodbye. Blow in seeds, droppings, springtime allergens. I am actually going to start dinner. I am gonna make this chorizo chickpea carbonara from one of my cookbooks, the Molly Baz cookbook, because I am trying to use cookbooks more because they're fun and they push me out of my comfort zone. So this looks really good. I don't know if I've ever made a carbonara before, let alone a remixed one. So I'm excited. I love eating carbonara, so it's a win. I need to get a cookbook stand, but this recipe is actually so easy. I've made my little egg yolk cheese concoction. I uh, cut my chorizo, strained my beans, which I'm about to cook with the chorizo, boiling my pasta water, and it's literally all about combining all these things together. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I made carbonara. It's so creamy from the egg yolk. I didn't curdle anything. I'm so excited. This was actually so fast and easy. Looks good, hope it tastes good. Very proud of myself. Evening plans, well, post painting my nails and watching The Real Housewives of New Jersey plans. Um, I'm gonna read more of Daughter of the Forest. Hi guys, good morning. Before we jump into my reading progress and update, I first wanted to chat about this video sponsor, which is Wondrium. Wondrium has been a long time sponsor on my channel, which is honestly my favorite thing because Wondrium is my favorite thing. If you're not familiar, Wondrium has actually rebranded recently from The Great Courses Plus. If you're not familiar, they are a premier educational and entertaining video subscription service, bringing you both illuminating, approachable, and educational content 
that is so much fun to consume. And their content not only ranges in genre from history to science to mathematics to lifestyle, but it also varies in video length from documentary to short form to long form lecture series style content. The incredible thing about One Dream 2 is that all the content is curated and often presented by professionals and experts within the fields themselves. Particularly, I'm a huge fan of the history lecture series they have, and all of them are either taught by accredited professors from top universities or from professionals from institutions like the Smithsonian. It is honestly so cool, and as a history major who has long since left college, it really allows me to continue learning from the comfort of my own home. I have taken so many cool lecture series from learning about the Medici, from ancient Rome, to learning about the Middle Ages and Charlemagne. I've actually just started a new series in light of traveling to Italy soon, and that is The Great Artists of the Italian Renaissance. This lecture series basically goes through lots of well-known artists, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, all the big people from the Renaissance in Italy, and I thought it'd be really fun to kind of learn as much as I can, so when I go and see a lot of these things in person, I'll be able to know a lot more about the background, and I think that'll really enhance my experience while I'm there. If you've truly ever wondered about anything, Wondrium is the place for you. There's so much cool things to explore and to expand your mind on. I, of course, have an offer code for you guys. If you're interested in getting a free trial, you can go to wondrium.com slash project. I'll also have it linked down below, but again, Again, big shout out to Wondrium for sponsoring this video. I love their service so much. It is simply so cool. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive back into the vlog. It's officially very hot in Texas, so I'm officially living an overall lifestyle. Hi friends, so I wanted to do a reading update of Daughter of the Forest as I have passed about the 50% mark of this book. And I'm loving this book so much. This is simply one of the best fantasy books I feel like I've read in a minute. Just the amount of emotional connection I feel to our main character, Soraha, her journey, her life, and just also the writing and just the quality of the story has just drawn me in immediately. I do want to give some updated trigger warnings for sexual assault, sexual violence. There's a very graphic scene that is present in this book, and I just want to be sure to call that out to anyone who might be interested in picking this up. That being said, though, just like I feel so connected to this book. This is like equal parts, a really dark and harrowing and like painful story to read, but you're also watching this girl go on this quest to try to save her family and the love she feels, even when it's kind of combined with conflicting emotions of anger and betrayal, like still shines through and just the dynamic nature of the book and the types of emotions that we're exploring and the author is exploring, I just feel like brings this to just an entirely different strata. It's just so well constructed and just it's really burrowed itself so quickly into my heart and I just feel like I'm gonna marathon this trilogy and I also feel like this is going to stay with me for a long time and become one of my favorite series. I just have this feeling about it. But being halfway through this book, um, obviously I've experienced a lot. It's interesting because I feel like the author really gave us quite a good amount of exposition in the beginning, really making us understand the bond that Sora feels with her brothers, not just like literally because they're tied together with magic, but like the emotional bond, the different types of relationships they each have with each other, the different personality quirks, like they all feel very whole and real. So when this curse occurs, you feel like the emotional impact of that to Sora. And then obviously watching Sora have to go on her own quest to try to save them and go through all these different trials and tribulations. You just immediately feel like very much along for the ride. It also has this very like classic, as I keep saying, like fantasy feel, like the quest itself, the tasks itself, like everything is like tied to the Fae. And, like, it feels like something you would come across in the stories that Sorha herself loves to consume and tell and everything. So like that is obviously parallel to itself. And I think it's just really well constructed. Um, right now she's on this harrowing journey still and the burden of it is obviously something that is being explored. A lot of this book too is about her being the daughter of the forest, this sort of magical connection to this place where she grew up, um, but also we see her have to kind of leave this forest in attempts to save her brothers. We see her kind of have to move about in other places outside her home and not to mention she literally cannot talk this entire time which is wild which is part of the curse. Despite all of that I do really feel like Sora's personality just really shines through and I love her and I'm just loving this book a lot. I'm not really sure 
exactly where it's going to go but I just know I'm really invested in finding out where it goes next and like I can't put this book down like every time I pick it up I am immediately pulled in and like I'm just flipping the pages but anyway that is my reading update for right now 50% of the way through I'm definitely gonna be reading more today um, I also want to start the shadow rising today as well so that's the plan but right now I'm gonna go make some lunch the mega toast is done beautiful it's time for a front room reading session ignore my filming setup that's still here past 250 pages my plan my goal is to pass the over 300 pages tonight and i don't feel like it'll be a huge problem because i'm loving this book i really cannot say it enough i'm loving this book if i could describe like a subgenre of this it's like cottage core fantasy <laughs> Like the vibes are immaculate, the settings, the castle settings, the forest, herbalism, the kind of sorcery and magic and connection to like folklore, like everything is so good. But then on top of that, the writing and the plotting is very intense. And Sora as a main character, you fall in love with. Like I love her, I'm rooting for her. She's such an incredible like center of the story. And just her perseverance and dedication to her family and also just like the relationships feel very tangible like i believe in her love for her brothers it's not just some abstract motivation like the author really took the time to establish that and the politics and just the intensity of Sora's journey where essentially she has not only been struggling to survive in the forest after her brothers have been enchanted but now she's been transported to a faraway enemy kingdom now she has to navigate complicated political scenarios while not being able to speak it's just so good and i love it so much um but now i'm going to shower face mask and start dinner which i'm looking forward to round two of using the cookbook um but yeah i plan on reading more later and i'll keep you guys updated with that round two of the cookbook this we're gonna eat for two nights because it's a rather big serving um it's one pot chicken and schmaltzy rice with lemony yolk um looks pretty simple i'm excited and i'm also going to put on my audiobook of this shadow rising wheel of time book four and listen to that whilst i prep I've already started the process of soaking my rice, which I then need to like clean and stuff for the one pot chicken and rice dish, but everything else, it's time to prep. Love a recipe that calls for seven cloves of garlic. Also chopped an entire onion, there's that. Uh, and my chicken thighs are browning skin down as we speak. Now this is and smells like a thing of beauty. Wow. Nothing like cooking onions and garlic in the leftover pan fat, my friends. Bring rice mixture to a boil, reduce to low, and cover for 16 minutes. The final touches are where things get a little interesting and where I've never really ventured before with chopped pistachios, spring, um, no, snap peas, <laughs> dill, and lemon, which is all gonna be mixed into the rice, which sounds good and then there's like a garlicky lemony sauce to top it off and a bon appetit matilda and i <laughs> it's just uh i've just been reading i'm on page 300 of daughter of the forest and this book is so good i feel like i'm going on such a journey emotionally literally it's like very different than Robin Hobb, but the um, in some ways the style is the same, like very character led, very emotional, very like well paced. I'm having a great time, but anyway, it's pretty late, so I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm for an afternoon coffee, and then friends, hold on, I will tell you, it is time to finish 
Daughter of the Forest. I have so little of this book left and I've absolutely loved every single second of it. The emotional stakes, the character arc, the journey. I just feel like I'm about to just binge all of Julia Merlier's books and it feels so good. It feels so good for something to have lived up to my expectations, but let's finish it. Let's not judge the fact I eat ramen once a week. Yum. Changed and headed out to dinner in one of my favorite dresses. Clay didn't have to work so late tonight, so we thought we would take advantage, go out for a nice dinner, a drink. I also finished Daughter of the Forest. It was superb. And uh, the only rest of my plans is listen to The Shadow Rising and play video games, so 10 out of 10. Burger, pretzel, Sammy, wine and beer. Hello team, happy Friday. I am once again in a squirt because that's literally all I wear nowadays. They're so comfortable and fun. Dinner last night was delicious. Literally came home and then immediately fell asleep. Um, but now I'm thinking, oh, I need to wrap up Daughter of the Forest and also give you guys my initial thoughts of The Shadow Rising, which I'm going to be focusing on reading today and listening to the audiobook and also just reading. I'm kind of swapping back and forth as I prefer to do with the wheel of time um but i'm also about to make lunch among other things so hello happy friday we're reaching the end and i wrote almost 500 pages which i am jazzed about so let's talk about daughter of the forest i immediately went and purchased book two so i feel like hello millie that says a bit about how much i loved this book because i enjoyed the journey from beginning to end i loved the character arcs the characterization just like it was incredibly emotional and just the trials and tribulations we watched Sorha go through combined with just the vibes and the overall setting. It was just everything I could have wanted it to be. Um, I also feel like it's a very dynamic story and that it houses a main character we're watching from beginning to end. I wouldn't say this is a story centering on romance, but really following our main character Sorha, but it does have romance and it is also beautiful. Like I love fantasy books have, you know, it all, if you will, an adventure, a quest, like fantastic, relationships including a romantic pairing it doesn't just need to be a romance if you know what i mean and i wouldn't say this is like a romance at all but it is a fantasy story with like a beautiful female-centered romance if you know what i mean so i loved it and i can't wait to read more juliette merlier because i just have a feeling i'm gonna love all of her books from there, I do want to talk about The Shadow Rising, which I've read 50 pages of. Hello, Robert Jordan. Um, this is book four to The Wheel of Time. I have a lot of this book left. It's, I think, almost 700 pages. So far, I am intrigued. It opens on Min, who is one of my favorite characters, and we are back kind of at the White Tower, or Tarvalin, um, with the Aes Sedai who also tend to be my favorite storylines. Everyone says they really like this book, so I'm really going in with an open mind and also maybe high expectations, which hopefully is a good combination. I've liked the first three books of The Wheel of Time, but I also feel like it has felt a little repetitive after a while and I don't really care about Rand. Um, so as long as I don't get like a lot of Rand in this book and we get to follow the other characters who I do like, like Nynaeve and Egwene and Min and the Aes Sedai and Perrin and Matt, like I'm usually good and we definitely got more of that in the third book, which I liked much more. But I'm also just like hoping the plot starts to finally expand. And the thing is like, I know it will because everyone talks about how expansive and epic this plot is, but so far I feel like it's just been a lot of talk so I'm hoping it begins to happen finally in book four. But from an introductory point of view, I really liked the opening chapters of this. Uh, I do feel like there is a, an immediate feel of intensity based off of the political consequences of the last few books. And it does feel like things are coming more from like isolated events. Like a lot of the first three books were very quest focused. Like we'd follow our characters, go from A to Z to get some sort of something or like get to some sort of location so in a way they felt very isolated um to that quest itself but it seems like now the consequences of all these disparate quests are starting to show itself in the larger political scheme of the wheel of time at least i hope <laughs> but nonetheless i'm going to read and listen more of this today and my hope is to get to page 100 um so i'll have passed the 500 page mark for this vlog but that's where we're at not so bad 10 out of 10, big fan of these things, and uh, we'll keep you guys posted. 
a reheat of dinner from a few nights ago and a little side salad for lunch today. Love it. I have taken too long of a break from Pokemon. So I'm gonna play some of that. And I am on chapter six of, that's a lie. I'm on chapter six of um, The Shadow Rising. So that's also exciting. Haha, <laughs> see, chapter six. Hey friends, it's later in the day and it is time to end this vlog. I've officially passed reading 500 pages, which honestly, I'm really jazzed with. Obviously, primarily for this vlog, I read Daughter of the Forest, which I loved. I'm now a Juliet Marillier stan. Happy to be here. And I hope you guys also read this book because it was truly impeccable. And I also did start the fourth Wheel of Time book and I was able to read 100 pages while playing Pokemon and doing like other chores around the house. Oh, Matilda is here. Um, honestly, the first 100 pages I am finding pretty interesting. I feel like it's much more intense, like right off the bat in comparison to the other three books. I also like that a lot of the girls are more on the same, not quite exactly the same level, but there's more communication and like teamwork between Moraine and like Nynaeve and everything. Um, and I just appreciate that there's just more like dialogue and strategy happening versus a lot of the first three books is people just sort of aimlessly wandering around and by no means people have answers it does feel like there is more teamwork versus just randomness and then fate bailing people out if that makes sense but i'm looking forward to listening and reading more and uh, i'll keep you guys posted obviously with my general thoughts and feelings but i hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and i will see you soon with another one soon goodbye